Greetings, Kerbinauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and this is episode number 28 of the Gateway Project, in which we are going to launch the Poisk docking module. It is a Russian component, of course, Russian in my world, right? Because every word has to start with K. But before we can do that, it's time to send up a replacement crew. A few of our Kerbinauts that are already up there have been up there for a little while now, and they would like to come back down to Kerbin surface. So we are sending up three brand new crew, and three of the older crew are going to come home. Whoosh! Look at those boosters fly away. That is some strong side boosters there. I think I forgot to reduce the power on those. I said I was going to, and then I never did. Uh, so we're sending up a Hydra crew carrier to the KSS, where we'll make that swap, and uh, the old crew will come down on the Hydra that's already up there on the station. We don't want our capsules to be up there for too long because we don't. We want to make sure they're safe all the time. So you keep swapping out. We bring up a new one and it stays for maybe six months like in the real world. And then it comes back down again at the next crew transition. And there we go. There is another direct from the surface rendezvous with the station. So the crew is not going to have to spend long at all in order to get up to the station. And then I crashed and I had not saved at that point and so I had to relaunch from the very beginning again. Well that's okay. Uh, if there's one thing that I don't mind doing it is launching spacecraft and watching the boosters fly away once again. I have no problems with that whatsoever especially since one of my favorite things to do is just the decoupling of these constructions and building stuff that just has like moving parts, robotics, and functional bits and pieces and all that stuff that comes along with having all these mods that I've got that uh, do the realistic things like the life support and all of that stuff. So that's what I enjoy doing. Whoa, I uh, fired that off a little too quick there. Well anyway, uh, we now are not going to have any troubles. This one's going to make it up to the station. Uh, so we're getting a look here at the back side of that cargo compartment on my my transfer stage. Well, not really the transfer stage, because that's what's decoupling and about to deorbit right now. No, I mean the uh, the trunk on the Hydra itself. There are three cases in there, and on this particular launch, I'm going to use those to represent some orbital replacement units that by this point should have come up and uh, been placed on the station on the ESP2, the external stowage platform, number two and number three, the one that hangs down underneath the integrated truss. In the last episode that brought up that Japanese experiment module, that was also one that was supposed to have brought up or ORUs, and because I didn't actually combine those launches together, I'm sort of representing that that happened with this launch. So a little bit out of sequence here. Um, also, the Discovery STS-128 mission is getting completely ignored altogether because it didn't bring up any new component. It only brought up the Leonardo cargo carrier as well as a little bit of extra gear. Uh, included in that, actually interestingly, was a new treadmill. And the treadmill's name was given a Colbert. And the reason why is 
Upcoming in one of my future launches, I'm going to be launching the Tranquility module that also has that cupola that goes on, side, on the outside of it. Well, they were trying to come up with the name for the Tranquility module. So NASA created an online poll where they said that people could vote for the name that they wanted and that they would take the name into consideration. So a guy named Stephen Colbert, who does a, co a show called The Colbert Report, he went on and said that he wanted the module named after him, and he's got a lot of viewers. And so people started writing in that they wanted it to be called The Colbert Module. Actually, let me interrupt myself here for a second because it looks like we're docking up. So not only do we have to deal with that where we're going to do the crew transfer in the bottom right picture in picture window, but I also wanted to rotate the station around a little and just make sure that it was uh, facing the sun in every direction there. So we do that and then I've decided also that I want to angle myself down along my prograde vector and uh, give myself a little boost to get the station pushed up into a slightly higher orbit because we have one side that's just a little bit too far down. So right here, I'm just running the engines on that uh, Hydra carrier there and it will use some of its fuel to put us into place and then we'll rotate back toward the sun again. Okay, getting back to the name and whether it was going to be called Colbert. Well, at the end of the day, he ended up winning by more than 40,000 votes, beating out the second place, which was Serenity, based, of course, on f the show Firefly. Well, NASA, of course, didn't want to name their module Colbert, so they uh, decided since the contest only stated that they would take the voting into consideration, they went with the name Tranquility instead in order to honor the uh, first landing on the moon where we landed in the Sea of Tranquility. And here we have Bob is going out there on an EVA. He's grabbing an antenna that is supposed to go up on that uh, ESP3 there. It's called a space to ground antenna or the S-Gant. It was brought up on STS-127. So that's another reason why this is simulating that launch as well. We're gonna go back and grab a couple more of those orbital replacement unit cases and put those out on the station as well. Anyway, astronaut Suni Williams went on the Colbert show and uh, announced to him that they had decided that they were going to call it Tranquility, but if he asked if he would be sort of jokingly would be okay with the idea that they named their treadmill after him. And so that's why the treadmill on the station is called the Colbert Treadmill. So now Bob is hooking up that Escant antenna directly onto the processing unit, or at least that's what I'm pretending is going on there, of course. Uh, it's directly onto the processing unit that helps manage those antenna signals that space to ground. And we're just gonna throw one more orbital replacement unit out here, and ESP number three will be fully loaded with all of the gear that it's supposed to have just in case anything goes wrong. We have all our parts there. We also have one we're gonna put out on ESP two. That one's not completely done yet. In the future, STS-133 is supposed to temporarily store a pump module out there, but we're pretty close to done on all the ESPs. We still have in the future some express logistics carriers to put out there, which if you want to know what that is, well, so do I. It looks exactly like an ESP to me. It functions like an ESP. It has all the same sort of components and everything. I haven't been able to figure out, honestly, in all of my research, what the difference is between an external stowage platform and an express logistics carrier. So if anybody has any idea what the difference is there, please post a comment because I'd actually really like to know. And now here we have our crew that was selected to go back. I don't know why it's showing only two crew right there because there are three inside. In fact, when they hit the water, I get them out to show there's three crew inside. Some kind of weird bug again with my interface. Anyway, we have decoupled that cargo compartment in the propulsion section that's flying above us now. And I guess uh, it's a little bit more aerodynamic than we are. We're slowing down, but it's not. And so it just goes along and starts exploding in the atmosphere and creating really cool looking shockwaves. I mean, that was a really awesome sight right there. 
So here we go, we're going through, losing a little bit of our ablative shielding on the bottom of the capsule, but we came in at a relatively low altitude and a relatively shallow entry angle, so we didn't lose much of that shielding. We get down as low as we can because I'm kind of lazy about my landings. I like to let them just get as low as they can before those drogue chutes come out. I'm using those combined chutes, the ones that have drogues and mains, both in the same docking port. So a very functional piece that comes from the SDHI mod as well as using the real shoots add-on to the SDHI mod to make that whole thing possible. So now, I have another really special launch for you. Вы можете видеть, что ракета готовится к запуску и похоже, дана команда зажигания. с космодрома Байкану только что стартовала ракета-носитель «Союз», которая выведет на околоземную орбиту новый исследовательский модуль «Поиск». Он пристыкуется к МКС уже через неделю. Модуль создан на базе грузового отсека корабля «Прогресс», однако на поиске установлены многие новые электронные компоненты. Как сообщили в Московском центре управления полетами, на модуле стоит новая экспрессивная система, новые пункты пилота, к тому же модуль оснащен рядом посадочных мест под научную аппаратуру. Внутри модуля в распоряжении космонавтов будет три километра пространства для размещения грузов и научного оборудования общим весом до 870 килограммов. Ракета-носитель «Союз» продолжает набор высоты. И судя по тому, что мы видим, полет проходит в штатном режиме. Многофункциональный модуль поиск не только позволит увеличить объем научных исследований, но и расширить возможности российского сегмента станции. С появлением на МКС нового модуля появится еще один стыковочный узел. В дальнейшем через эти шлюзы космонавты смогут выходить в открытый космос для работы с западом станции. Добавлю, что сейчас в составе МКС три российских модуля. Заря, Звезда и Кирсно. А теперь, после этого запуска, на МКС появится еще четвертый российский модуль. Малый исследовательский поиск. Российский информационный канал есть и ведет для вас прямую трансляцию с космодрома Байкану, где только что состоялся запуск ракеты «Союз» с исследовательским модулем «Поиск» на борту. Трансляция была организована в студии «Роскосмос». Yes, indeed, Kerbinauts. The POSC module has now arrived at my KSS. This was launched on a modified Progress craft back in November of 2009. I have begun my slow approach across the top of the station where we're going to ease our way in between these solar panels and then lower down upon that Zvizda module. POSC means in Russian, either a search or explore or something like that. It is a mini research module. So its other name is the mini research module too. So here we are, I'm bringing it down ever so gently now and I need to get some sort of award for how slow this was. And the camera angle I selected in order to get a really cool cinematic shot of it slowly coming down there. I, ha I did that completely from that view. So the Poisk module, it went up just four days before the next NASA flight, STS-129 Atlantis. And now, Kerbinauts, I have bumped into another strange bug. You see this satellite right here? Well, that's when I go into normal speed, and then when I go back into uh, warp speed, all the parts come back again, and they disappear and reappear based on whether or not I'm in warp speed or not. I have a sneaking suspicion this might have been another remote tech bug. Now we're going to take away that little lower stage there that helped us put the POISK into place. Uh, anyway, I also had another problem where the radiators, you can see the radiators on the station as we fly through here right now. Those radiators were appearing about a kilometer away from the station. 
and it was causing the center of mass calculation to think that the camera should be way off center. And uh, I had to do a little bit of hackery save file editing in order to uh, fix that up, but it was causing it to be really crazy. Like it, I couldn't get the camera anywhere near the station anymore. It was just zooming really far away over time. Anyway, let's go to the VAB. And here we have the POISC in the Vehicle Assembly Building. You can see that I have used the same base rocket as I did on the launch in the episode before this. The only difference would be the payload. This was originally sent on a modified progress, so if we look up here we're going to see that the craft itself is going to look a bit like a progress down on the bottom. One big difference from the ones that I've done in the past is I have the big monopropellant tank here and I have one of those B9RCS blocks at the bottom and a couple on the side here, but I didn't put any on the other sides. I figured that I could do everything using just these because it has enough to slow it down going forward with these and then these have all the other directions. This is of course going to make it a little bit harder to control, but I was trying to simulate the real thing and just see what it was like. And basically Basically, the way the real thing is, is uh, they kind of line their stuff up ahead of time and then glide more than I do because I'm trying to go a lot faster. So it would be a lot easier if I had the RCS all over it like you normally would put on a craft. And you can see on the inside there we have our usual stuff like the surface mounted batteries and the remote tech and more batteries and another remote tech and the solar panels on the side, and that's it for the bottom. Here's the CPU for it. So moving our way up to the top, I have the docking node that goes onto the station. I have the actual POISC right here, and then the bottom has the other docking node where other craft would come and dock onto it because this actually goes on, the top was up here, and other craft are gonna dock down at the bottom. And then we have a procedural fairing on top of the CPU I used to put it up. If we'd look a little bit closer at how I actually created the POIS kit itself, you can see that I have put a couple antenna on the side. Those are intended to simulate the uh, extra antenna that are out there that help incoming craft to orient themselves and navigate to the station. If we move this up a little, you can see that a craft coming in would be coming in from this side right here where these antenna then would help it find its way up and connect to that docking node allowing any crew or cargo to go through here and then through here and through here into the station this is one welded piece if we take these away this is the one welded piece all of that is put together using just some simple stuff like this AIE S pod and some batteries, struts, antenna, and that's a B9 end cap. And that's it on that one. There's one more launch to get started. We know that we have seen Joseph send a rocket to the moon, and we know that there have been anomalies popping up all over the place, including one that was near Minmus where all that debris came out and rained down on the research facility. So we need to start scanning around Moon as well. So I have a satellite in here that is on its way to Moon, and we're going to find out in the next episode what it discovers when it gets there. We're going to analyze all those scans and look at a map of the surface and just see what's going on. Also next time on the Gateway Project, we're going to be sending up the equivalent payloads of Atlantis Flight STS-129, which was from November of 2009. They had the ex external logistics carriers number one and number two. There's also a new high pressure tank that needs to go up onto the side of the quest module. All of this will bring us up to mission 92 out of 143. And to top it all off, we do need to go back and find out what's going on on Minmus. Are they going to survive? What are we going to do to rescue our crew? We'll find all of that out next time. Until then, I'll see you later, Kerbinauts. <laughs>